Hello everyone and welcome to our lesson on pollution. I'm Mrs Jennison and I'm an Associate Director for Our Grange Academies Trust. Before we start, it would be really useful if you could turn off your notifications so that you are not distracted throughout the lesson. It would also be very useful if you had a pen and paper to hand so that you could take part in the activities during the lesson. In our previous lessons, we have looked at our rising population and then looked into rainforest destruction. In today's lesson, we will look at pollution. Our first outcome is to be able to recall the types of pollution. And our second outcome is to be able to explain the impact of pollution in different situations. Since humans evolved, we have needed access to resources for food, shelter, water and warmth. And our use of Earth's resources has changed over time. The human population increased slowly from 1800 to 1900 and since then has increased quickly. As we saw in our previous lesson, a larger population means that more food is needed, which means we need more land for farming, we will need more land for shelter, and we will also need more land in order to increase our amount of landfill. The increase in population has also led to an increase in pollution. There are different types of pollution and each of these types will have a different effect on the planet. Pollution is known as the presence or introduction into the environment of a substance which has harmful or poisonous effects. The different types of pollution we will be looking at in this lesson are air, water and land but there is also noise and visual pollution. Now I'd like to start you off with a few questions. First of all, what is pollution? What causes pollution? And can you name some of the different types of pollution?
So pollution is the presence of a substance in the environment which has harmful or poisonous effects. And our use of land and the Earth's resources causes pollution, whether that be for landfill, the burning of fuels or the process of farming. The different types of pollution are air, noise, visual, land and water. Now we are going to focus on three types of pollution in this lesson. That doesn't mean we won't look at the other types in other lessons in later topics, but just for today we're going to focus on air, land and water pollution. Now air pollution is typically caused by the burning of fuels. Different fuels produce different substances as they burn, but the main pollutants are carbon dioxide, which is linked to global warming, sulfur dioxide, which causes acid rain, and soot, which is linked to global dimming. Now, acid rain is caused by sulfur dioxide and it has a negative effect on plants due to changing the pH of soil and it can also affect aquatic life. Alongside that, acid rain can also dissolve limestone and marble slowly over time. Global dimming is caused by soot building up in the atmosphere and it leads to less sunlight reaching the earth. It can also cause respiratory issues. Global warming is caused by increased greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, which can lead to increasing global temperatures. Now that's linked to several devastating effects, such as the ice caps melting and sea levels rising alongside mass migration. Now water pollution has many different causes, some of which are fertilizer runoff from fields, plastics in the ocean due to our disposal, and sewers running into rivers and oceans. The presence of plastics in our ecosystems, such as our oceans, can lead to the death of animals. Now this is more prevalent in aquatic life through ingestion or becoming entangled and that can be seen in several of the images seen on the screen. However, there are some land-based mammals and birds that are also struggling due to the presence of plastic in their environment, again through ingestion and becoming entangled. Now, the images on the screen can be quite distressing, however, I just want to point out one to you, which is the turtle, which was stuck in the can holder. Now, that turtle was lovingly named Peanut, and was taken in by the scientists who found him. Um, that photo was taken many years ago and if you search Peanut the Turtle, um, last time I checked he was still alive and well, however he was living in captivity because he wouldn't have survived in the wild and his shell has never regained its normal shape. So he, it has remained deformed because of the plastic he became entangled in. And as he continued to grow, he grew around that plastic. Chemical waste can be caused by chemicals and rubbish which is thrown into waterways and that can lead to levels of harmful chemicals leading to the death of aquatic life, land animals who drink it and also plant life. So by putting waste into rivers and lakes, we can damage not just the animals that live in that area, but any other organisms within that food chain. Diseased water is caused by an increase of rubbish and waste being disposed into the water, which is not great because if diseased water is ingested by humans or animals, it can be harmful or, uh, or fatal in worst cases. Now for land pollution, again, it has many different causes, including our use of landfill and also our use of chemicals in farming. So soil pollution occurs when changes in soil conditions can harm animal and plant life, 
and also damaging ecosystems and food chains. Farming is a cause of land pollution due to their use of pesticides and herbicides and if they end up in unintended areas they can cause harm to the habitats and the animals living in those habitats. Now let's summarise each of the types of pollution we have looked at. So first of all in air pollution we looked at carbon dioxide which causes global warming, soot which causes global dimming and sulphur dioxide which causes acid rain. In water pollution we looked at the chemical water pollution, diseases that can be spread due to water pollution and also plastic pollution. Now I'm linking that plastic also to land because it can affect animals and organisms on land as well as animals and organisms in water. But also for land, we could have soil pollution and farming's contribution to pollution. So what I'd like you to do now is I'm gonna give you some time to answer the questions on the screen. Give two effects of air pollution, two effects of water pollution, and two effects of land pollution. So you could have had any two of the following for the effects of air pollution, global warming and its linked effects, loss of habitat, melting ice caps, migration, rising sea levels, acid rain, reduced plant growth and killing fish, or global dimming, reduced plant growth and less light getting to the earth. For water pollution, you could have had any two of plastic, which kills animals, gets into food chains. Chemicals, which can kill animals and again, get into food chains. And disease and water's contribution to spreading certain infections, which is linked to our putting waste into that water. For land pollution, you could have had soil, which could harm animals and affect food chains. Farming, which can spread to other areas affecting food chains or 
affecting animals that are living in those areas. So considering all of those effects, I'd like you to think about how we could reduce the amount of pollution on our planet. So first of all, we could reduce our fossil fuel combustion and use more renewable energy resources. Both of these will reduce the amount of carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere. We could reduce our use of landfill, reduce our use of pesticides, and that's going to reduce our land pollution. Increasing recycling, increasing the use of recycled materials, and reducing the use of single-use plastics will all reduce the amount of plastic going into the, into the waterways and therefore the plastic pollution. And we could also reduce the amount of chemicals going into rivers and oceans and therefore reducing the water pollution. So that's everything from me in this lesson and I will see you soon.